So running a bed and breakfast, a motel, an Airbnb, it's a dream that a lot of people have. You stand behind the counter, happy guests come in, pretty much all you're doing is shaking hands, hey, thanks for coming, hey, thanks for staying, that's going to be $500, please. Now this is the romantic vision of owning a bed and breakfast, and some of that might be true, but it's not 100% accurate. Today we're going to look at reasons why you may not want to own a and b So we get a lot of flack in the comments on these videos that we're being overly negative. So I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. For some people, buying a bed and breakfast could be a good business opportunity. All of us are different. We've got different goals, operational preferences, skills, abilities, personalities. All that we're doing in these videos is providing a few reasons that nobody else tells you <laughs> that why owning one of these businesses may not be the best option for you. So not being negative, we're just telling other reasons that you don't often hear out there. So last summer, almost succumbed to this romantic notion of owning a bed and breakfast and started looking into buying one. And at first glance, what a great business. You buy these beautiful mansions, might be by the ocean. You rent out rooms. Maybe you've got a gourmet restaurant in there as well. It's an all-cash business. And here's how people think. So I buy a and b, &B it has eight rooms, for example. I rent those rooms out for $200 a night, whatever. At peak capacity, that's going to be $1,600 a day, a little over $11,000 a week, over $44,000 a month. So pretty much over half a million dollars just for smiling and welcoming people. What a great gig. And right here is where most people's critical faculties stop. They don't research anymore because they don't want to shatter their dream of owning this b, &B. So spoiler alert, if you don't want your dream to be shattered, click away on that link right above. Okay, so for you people who want the red pill, let's say we invested about a million dollars into a bed and breakfast and we're grossing half a million dollars annually. Now we're not going to get into ways of valuating a bed and breakfast, how much you should pay, what it's worth, but we'll use this as a fairly conservative and whole number. So in most cases, buyers are going to need to finance a portion of this investment. That's going to bring us to the first barrier of entry with your hotel or your B&B financing. So the loan when you went to get a loan for your house, it was pretty easy, right? You signed some papers. Thank you very much. Here's your $800,000 plop right on there. Very easy to get. Now, not easy. In fact, very difficult with a bed and breakfast or a motel. So first, keep in mind, if you get a commercial loan, they're typically going to need at least 25% down. That may vary a bit. Could be less, could be more. So you're going to need about 250000 liquid cash available to invest. Now you can possibly get a residential mortgage in certain circumstances, but that's rare. Uh, if your residential usage of the air, of the B&B is higher than the commercial usage, but it can be risky. You're going to want to speak to a specialist on that. Now loans on commercial properties, they're not secured by Fannie or Freddie. So the banks don't want to part with their money quite as easily. So interest rates also higher than residential quite a bit on occasion. They can ask for balloon payment, which uh, that means in a few years, you could be on the hook to pay the entire amount off. Ask the banks about this. We're not going to get into detail, but Google Airbnb or B&B uh, balloon payment. You can learn a bit more about that or speak to your uh, loan officer. Now, the banks are also going to want to see a complete business plan what you're anticipating to come in, how you're going to turn this business around. So if you're buying a failing or struggling bed and breakfast, chances are you're going to find it very difficult to raise traditional financing. Now, there are a couple of SBA options uh, if you're living in the U.S. that can make things a little bit easier, but it's still going to be a challenge to get financing. Nowhere near as easy as it is for residential businesses. Now, we're not going to dig a lot deeper into this topic, but just be prepared to jump through a lot of hoops and end up paying a lot more in fees and interest than you would with residential than you first envisioned. But let's say you have money. You're going to be buying your Airbnb or your B&B, your motel cash. How much can you actually make with a bed and breakfast business? So we're going to take a look now at some listings that are in my own area here. Now, these listings are current. 
They're not far off most of the listings I looked at across the country. And remember, I'm in a very rural area. So these prices are a lot lower than you're going to be paying in a city, probably by five to eight times. So first off, we've got a 12 to 14 room motel. They're asking 675000 Revenue is 185000 with a cash flow of about $100,000. Next, we've got a motel and cottages. They're asking $650,000. Cash flow between fifty dollars to $100,000. The Castle Inn, actually a nice place. They're asking just under a million. 13 rooms with a 49-seat restaurant. Cash flow between fifty dollars to $100,000. Now here's a hotel. They're asking $3 million. Their cash flow is between two hundred and fifty dollars to $500,000. Another one here, $3.3 million asking price. Cash flow between 250 to 500 thousands. So most people never take the time to compare this industry with other industries. So they run their motel or B&B &B for years. They never know if they made a good investment comparatively. So let's take a look at that. Here is another listing, same directory for a QSR franchise restaurant. $175,000 investment with cash flow pretty much the same <laughs> as the $700,000 motels that we just looked at. Here's an Asian food franchise, 225,000 asking, cash flow of 182,000. So an investment one third the price with cash flow almost double the amount over motels. Here's an online business. They're asking 265, cash flow of 87,000. And these are just random examples that happen to be on this very small directory today. I can tell you definitively, there are franchises out there with about $100,000, $150,000 investment that average $1.5 million annually gross. Now, there's some nuances here as your expenses with your bed and breakfast can tie back to equity building in your asset. So there's a little bit difference here, but from a, from a purely cash flow perspective, and you can check the listings in your own area, this industry is just not at the top of the scale. So depending on your goals, that might not be a good fit. Now, beyond brick and mortar businesses, so the B&B or the franchises, we also have online businesses now. And let's take a look at some current listings. So right here is a listing on Empire Flippers. They're asking 1.4 million with a net monthly profit of almost $60,000. That's $720,000 a year net profit a year. Now remember our hotel for over $3 million was cash flowing under $500,000. Here's a technology app. They're asking $500,000 with a net profit almost a quarter of a million dollars a year. And you'll see most online businesses will sell for between 20 to 40 times multiple of their monthly net earnings. So within 20 to 40 months with most online businesses, if nothing goes wrong, uh, you would have made your money back, perhaps sooner if you even if, if you start to build that business. Now there's hundreds of online businesses that are for sale at any given moment online right now. Of course, if you have no idea about how the online world works, probably not a good fit for you. But in a world where Walmart is closing over 200 retail stores this year, we can see that online commerce really is trending right now. Highly advisable to at least learn the basics of the online world or you're not going to be able to function. Now that's going to bring me to the next reason why you might not want to buy a bed and breakfast. You have no idea how to market online. So bottom line, in order to rent your rooms, you need people to visit your location. And if you look at so many of these bed and breakfast and motel websites, they have a shoddy template website from the mid nineties, tiny grainy pictures that you can't even see, useless social media, and they wonder why it's so hard to get people to find them. Now they end up paying a fortune to third party websites and companies just to fill up their rooms. Now, if you buy a motel, if you buy a B&B or any business for that matter, learn online marketing and social media. Within six months to a year, you could be enjoying warm leads globally from your optimized website, building your social media tribe and never ever have to pay for leads again. Now, for some reason, it's like this industry is stuck in the land the internet forgot 
when they had the single greatest opportunity to build a global presence and attract visitors from around the world literally for free. So if you have no idea about social media or how to upgrade that horrible website that came with your purchase, be prepared to pay a fortune for leads and to lose business to the owners locally around you who are taking the time to market their business and post pictures that are over 12 kilobytes in size. Now next up, and perhaps most important, is your personality. Now your vision, again, is happy people shaking your hand, thanking you for the stay, leaving great reviews, life is good, and you are getting rich. Now reality check, not all people are going to be like that. So here at Franchise City, we actually have a tool. It's called a psychometric assessment. It analyzes people's personality, find their strengths and weaknesses, and actually match those to the right franchise business model. Now, some people are just not a good fit for social situations. So absolutely, you're gonna have some nice people, they're gonna leave good reviews, business is gonna be good. But you're also gonna have entitled, unreasonable, and just mean and nasty people who show up at your place as well. Now, there are some people who are just great dealing with those type of social situations. No matter how cranky or unreasonable a guest gets, no matter how bad the situation, they are always diplomatic, they are always cheerful. And that's fantastic. They see the bright side of everything. These folks are ideal B&B owners. Now, most people, however, myself included, are just not like that. So yes, I'm the first to admit, most stays are uneventful. Guests come, they stay, they leave, you make money. But sometimes they're gonna break things. Adults or kids can and will soil the bed. And you've gotta ask yourself, are you gonna be hiring maids or is this a small B&B &B where you're doing everything yourself? Now, if it is yourself, are you ready for these eventualities that are going to happen? So people, they're gonna bring bed bugs, right? They're coming from all over the world. They're coming from all over the place. They haven't, and some of them are gonna bring bed bugs. If you don't rectify these situations immediately, you're gonna to spread to other rooms. Even before you catch it, somebody could see them, leave you a bad review. There's gonna be dirty people who leave stuff everywhere. They don't throw it in the trash, it's all over the floor, right? They clog the toilets, they're gonna to clog the sinks. There's gonna be smells of people ranging from heavy perfume to the cigarette smoke from the people who ignored the signs that you have there for, for no smoking. It's gonna happen quite often. There's gonna be stains of unknown origin that don't come out on furniture, bedding, and towels. You're gonna to have awkwardly loud honeymooners or very loud guests partying to the wee hours in the morning that you're gonna to have to get up, knock on the door, and advise them they're gonna to have to chill out. Now, all while knowing that if you do go there and very politely ask them, hey, could you quiet it down a bit? Next day, you're probably gonna get feedback. We were quietly knitting and praying, and the very rude owner banged on our door and told us to be quiet or he would call the police. Zero stars, do not stay here. You're gonna get phone calls from people who ask 10 million questions, who tie you up for hours on end, and never book a room. There's gonna be people who book a room for two and pack six people into that room without paying. Now, is it worth the negative feedback to say anything to them? That's a call you're gonna to have to make. There's gonna be people who think it is reasonable to call you at 2 a.m. for extra towels, and there's gonna be people who are checking in, they're a little bit tipsy and a lot loud at 2 a.m. You better smile, you better get out there, or be forever known on Yelp as the one-star towel miser or the cranky host. For me, this is really the main reason I could never own a b and I'm just way too cranky to deal with these things, and they're gonna happen. And it's just gonna be a bottomless, endless slide. Once you start to get the bad feedback, you get crankier, crankier, every person that comes in, you don't wanna deal with it anymore, and you're just gonna end up listing your, your b and for a loss. So think very hard not just about the people who are coming in saying, hey, thanks for staying, but for the cranky people, entitled people, people that are gonna make your life very difficult because they are out there and they are gonna stay at your place. So here's the deal. If you're great with people, you're impervious to negativity, very cheerful person, you're up on and motivated by the thought of digital marketing your own business and your website, you're prepared for some conflict in difficult situations and people, you're motivated more by lifestyle than you are by money, and your financing situation is all good, a bed and breakfast or a hotel might be a good business for you. But don't hesitate to look at other businesses as well just to compare. Please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.